morning, boys and girls. How are you today? Boys and girls, it's so good to be here with you again. And we are almost down to the end of our bug series. Today, we're going to be talking about <gasps> creepy crawly bugs. But it's a small creature, but it can give us a big lesson. Boys and girls, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these boys and girls. And I pray, Lord, that they will listen to what you have for them today. May they be able to put it into their lives and be very careful. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, let's get right into our lesson. boys and girls. What's up? I'll avoid the web of temptation. I'll avoid, I'll stay away from the web of temptation. So boys and girls, what kind of a bug do you think we're learning about today? Yes, it is the spider. And we're going to do some spider trivia. Are you ready? Get your thinking caps on. Which spider has a red hourglass shape on his stomach? Brown recluse, white stallion, black widow, purple people eater. <gasps> You're right, it is the black widow. The next one, where is the most, where is the place you would find the most tarantulas? Tarantulas are humongous spiders. Where do you think most of them live? South America, Africa, Europe, the zoo. Where do you think? <gasps> nope, not Africa. It's South America. Because it's nice and viney and green and ew. But anyways, true or false, boys and girls, the smallest spider is actually the size of the head of a pin. Not a pen to write with, but a pin that you would put in your clothing. Is that true or is that false? Right again, it's true. The smallest spider is the head of the pin, the size of the head of the pin. Which spider lives in the grass? Wolf spider, boa spider, grass spider, or spider man? Boys and girls, this one was easy. It's a grass spider. And boys and girls, which spider pounces on its prey just like a cat kind of jumps right on it? Well, is it a tarantula, jumping spider, black widow, or tigger spider? T I double the er, tigger. It is a jumping spider. How many different species of spiders are there? 
in the world. Ooh, this is a hard one, boys and girls. Do you think there's 370, 3,700, 37,000, or 370,000? Well, if we lived in South America, we might think that it's 370,000. But boys and girls, really, there's only 37,000 different species in the world of spiders. How many spiders do you think were used in the making of the movie Spider-Man? 256, 304, 559, or one large big spider? Boys and girls, believe it or not, 256 different spiders were used in the making of Spider-Man. True or false, you are more likely to be killed by a poodle than a poisonous spider. Oh, I hope that that's true. Yes, it's true. We are more likely to be killed by a poodle than a poisonous spider. Which spider is often called the violin spider? A brown recluse, the bolo spider, Stradivarius spider, or Beethoven spider. Oh, boys and girls, it is the brown recluse. And the biggest spider in the world is as big as a pool ball, a dollar bill, a dinner plate, or a Ford Explorer. Oh, please don't be the Ford Explorer. Dinner plate, yay! Great job, boys and girls. You did great on your spider trivia. And now you don't have to be so nervous about spiders when you know that eh, there's not that many poisonous ones and you're more likely to get hurt by a poodle than you are a spider. So let's go to Mosquito. <laughs> And that's what you're going to learn about in your lesson today. It's going to be amazing. Well, 
before I go. I guess I should at least try to eat the spider. Oh, uh, what? Oh, sorry. My mom's calling me. I've got to run. I guess I'll eat the spider next time or never. See you later. Oh, boys and girls. <sighs> Poor mosquito. Yes, today, boys and girls, we're going to be looking in God's Word. It's in Mark, or I'm sorry, it's in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. So if you have your Bibles, you can look right up there. Matthew is in the New Testament, chapter 4, and verses 1 through 11. And it says the temptation of Jesus. It says, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. So boys and girls, what that meant was that Jesus, after he was baptized, he went out into the desert. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he didn't eat or drink anything. And he just prayed, asking God the Father what God wanted him to do. So, fasting means he didn't eat. And can you imagine not eating anything for 40 days? Oh, boys and girls, I'm sure he was extremely hungry. Well, as Jesus was there in the wilderness, guess who shows up? It is Satan. None other than the devil himself. He came to try to tempt Jesus to sin. He came to Jesus and he said, If you are the Son of God, see, Satan always sends doubt. If you are the Son of God, well, of course he's the Son of God. But he said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Now, could Jesus have done that? Could he have turned these stones into bread? Absolutely. But that's not what God the Father wanted him to do. And so, how did Jesus fight the devil? He told him, no. The scriptures say people need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. Boys and girls, Jesus didn't argue. Jesus didn't fight. Jesus just spoke truth from God's word. Well, then the devil took him to Jerusalem and he had him stand up on the highest temple, highest mountain, I'm sorry, and showed him the nations of the world and all their glory. And now... Satan is going to use God's words against him. The devil took him to the holy city, to the highest point, and he said, If you are the son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say, he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. See, the devil was being sneaky. He was trying to use God's own words against him. But Jesus is smarter than the devil. And Jesus responded, The scripture also say, Do not test the Lord your God. Oh, boys and girls. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms as far as the eye could see. And the devil told Jesus, I will give it all to you if you will only kneel down and worship me. Oh, boys and girls, the devil was trying to trick Jesus, but Jesus responded, for the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Yes, Jesus hits the devil with the word of God. And the Bible tells us right then, the devil went away. Jesus had defeated the devil by using God's word. 
Today, we're going to be learning about staying alert and watching for the traps of the devil. If he tried to trap Jesus with temptation, then there's no doubt he will try to trap you and me as well. And we must avoid Satan's web of temptation. Now, boys and girls, have you... We're going to find out about our power verse. Hello, class. My name is Professor Buzzby McFly, and I am a bugologist, which means I study insects every day to determine what valuable lessons they might give us in order for us to become better Christians. Today's bug is the spider. Now these creepy crawly creatures have the amazing ability to shoot silk out from their bodies and create webs. And in these webs, they can collect all sorts of things like grasshoppers and, and, and butterflies and, and antique baseball cards and, and fortune cookies and, and basketballs. And, and sometimes they collect enough basketballs and they can start their own NBA team. Uh, really small courts, of course. You need magnifying glasses to watch it, but it's amazing. I think. Mm. Probably. I don't know. But what I do know is that the spider reminds me of today's power verse, which says... Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Bazinga! That power verse was superlative. Now, what I need is for all the boys to stand to their feet. Stand up, say boys. The power verse. Grayson, three. Esther, One, Riley, two, stand up. Three. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. That was fantastic, boys. You may sit down. Now, all the girls stand. Okay, up girls, let's and stand up. Say the, up. Power verse, on say the, the verse. Here we go. One, two, three. Resist, Resist the, the devil, devil, and he will flee from you. James 4 7. What Good amazing job, Bella. You may be seated. Isn't it true? We must avoid at all costs the web of temptation. In fact, we should probably avoid spider webs altogether. Because when you run into them, you look like a crazy person. <laughs> now, I need everyone to stand to their feet and say the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Resist, Resist the, the devil, devil and he will flee, flee from, from you. you. James 4, 7. Excellent job, everyone. You may be seated. Well, that's it for me. I'm back off to the lab to study another bug. Well, I'll be reading books like a bookworm and searching for articles on the worldwide spider web. Until next time, this is Professor Buzzby McFly. Bye! Oh, let's try it again. James 4, 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Boys and girls, that's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't fight, he didn't argue, he didn't stand there and cry. No, Jesus just resisted him by using God's own word back to the devil. And finally, the devil gave up and went away. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Boys and girls, how many of you have ever walked into a spider web? Ew. You walk into it not realizing it's there and it gets into your hair and it's sticky on your face and your clothes and it just won't come off. Will you ever, ever wonder why it's so sticky? Boys and girls, it's because the web is what the spider uses to catch other insects. Then the spider, once that bug is in the web, then the spider swoops down and devours that. Our enemy, the devil, kind of works the same way. You know, boys and girls, the Bible tells us that the enemy, that our enemy, the devil, has only three things on his mind. To steal our innocence, to kill our hopes and dreams, 
and to destroy our future. He tries to set up a trap for us and tries to get us to sin. He knows that sin is the one thing that God hates. That's why he tries to lay a web of temptation for us to try to trap us. It's kind of like a mouse trap. You've seen mouse traps where they're the little brown square and they have a trap and on the end of that trap, you put something that the mouse will really like, like peanut butter or cheese. And then what happens is as soon as the mouse comes over and starts nibbling on that peanut butter or cheese, boom, it's caught. It's caught in the trap. And that's what makes it a trap. It's something to be caught in. Well, boys and girls, why do we put out my mouse traps? Because we want to catch the mice. Why does the devil try to trap us? Because he wants us to get caught. Not only does he want to trap us, but boys and girls, the devil knows how to trap us. He knows that we're only human and he's been watching us. He's been watching our whole lives and he knows in what areas we're kind of weak in. He sees when we've messed up before and he knows where our weaknesses are. Well, remember the mouse trap and what did we put in to lure the mouse? We put peanut butter or cheese, didn't we? And that's because that's what the mouse likes. Well, if you don't like to watch movies with bad language, then the devil isn't going to put that in front of you because he knows that you don't like that. So that you're not going to want to watch it. But boys and girls, why do we put peanut butter on the mouse trap? Because we know that's what the mouse likes. And boys and girls, maybe your weakness is lying. Maybe because you want people to think you're cool, you make up lies to tell them about yourself. Maybe your weakness is watching bad stuff on TV or hanging out with the wrong people that your mom and dad have said, you know, it's not really good that you hang out with them. They're only going to bring you trouble. And maybe you like to hang out with them. Whatever your weakness is, boys and girls, the devil is going to try to use that against you. He's going to try to trap you into that sin. Just like we use peanut butter to trap the mouse, the devil will put the most tempting thing in the web that he has planned for us. And so right now you might be sitting there thinking, oh, Miss Donna, this is so depressing. The devil wants to trap us and he knows exactly how to trap us. What's the use? Well, boys and girls, that's where the good news comes in. The devil can't trap us. Even though he really wants to trap us and he knows how to trap us, he cannot trap us as long as we stay alert and are aware of his web of temptation. You see, boys and girls, our power verse tells it all. Remember it? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Even if the devil tries to lay a web of temptation in front of us, as long as we resist the temptation and turn away, then we won't be caught in sin. You may be tempted, but you don't have to sin. Oh, all you have to do is tell the devil to get out of here and he has to run away. Boys and girls, we are so excited about this lesson. The small spider, big decisions, big lessons. Yes, boys and girls, the spider did teach us a big lesson. To be alert, to be aware, and to stay away from those spider webs, the devil's trap. You can do it. Let's pray. Lord, I pray right now that the kids here will be strong and resist the devil's web of temptation. I pray for those that have already fallen into sin. And I pray, Lord, that you would encourage them to ask for forgiveness because we know, Lord, that you will forgive. 
Lord, I pray that you will help them to see where they are weak and help them, Lord, by giving them words from your book, the Bible, giving them scriptures to help them to stay strong in those areas. Lord, how we thank you and praise you, for you are our God. Help us, Lord, in the day of temptation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, what's up? I'll avoid the trap of temptation. Yes, you will. Have a great week, boys and girls, and we'll see you next week when we learn about... I'm not going to tell you. See you next week. Bye-bye.